This lesson explains how to fill an area with a color gradient, that is, a fill that fades slowly from one color into another. Now you can actually fill any shape with a color gradient, and we'll be getting into the filling of different shapes in a later lesson. Right now, I'll just fill a simple rectangular shape. So you can see what I'm talking about. Let me show you the output of the program, and then I'll explain how it works. The rectangle being filled is the same size as the window. The color starts with cyan on the left and fades into green on the right. Now, here's how that's done. There are several new things in this paint method. You may recall that the graphics object passed to paint is actually a graphics 2D object. To be able to do the gradient stuff, we're going to need to use some of the graphics 2D methods. So, to do this, this statement creates a graphics 2D reference and stores the graphics object into it. This casting, right here, converts the graphics object into a graphics 2D object. There are other ways to do this, but I like this one. With this statement at the top of the paint method, I can use the name G2 in the paint method and refer to the graphics 2D object. Now the rectangular shape that we're going to fill is a rectangle 2D object. If this constructor statement looks odd to you, then you've been paying attention. It is odd. You see, the class named float is a nested class. It's defined inside the rectangle 2D class. Now the float class is defined inside the rectangle 2D class. It is a nested class, so to call its constructor you have to call it as a member of the rectangle 2D class. And you do that with a dot reference, the same as you would for any static method of the rectangle 2D class. But that's not all. This nested class, the one named float, not only is defined as a nested class inside Rectangle 2D, it also extends the Rectangle 2D class. That means that the float class is a Rectangle 2D class. Now the Rectangle 2D class doesn't have a constructor that you can use to create the object, but the float class does have such a constructor, and this statement uses that constructor to create an object of the Rectangle 2D class. This call to set rect sets the size and location of the Rectangle 2D object. The first two arguments are the x and y location of the upper left hand corner of the rectangle. The last two are the width and height of the rectangle. The lowercase f following each number specifies that the data type of that number is a float. You might want to make note of the fact that the size of this rectangle is exactly the same size as the window itself. Oh, by the way, there's also a nested class named double inside the Rectangle 2D class, and you can use that one to create versions of Rectangle 2D that use doubles instead of floats in the method calls. All right, another new class. This statement declares a reference to the gradient paint object. A gradient paint object can be stored inside your graphics 2D object, and the rules it contains are then used to fill areas. This is the statement that creates a new gradient paint object. The first three arguments here specify that the gradient painting is to begin at point zero zero, the upper left hand corner of our rectangle, and it's to begin with the color cyan. The last three arguments specify that the color is to continue to the upper left hand corner and it'll end with green. That is, the gradient proceeds along a line and spreads straight out in each side of the line as far as needed to fill the shape. Now this method stores our gradient paint object into the graphics 2D object so it will be used for filling. This fill method is used to fill the rectangular shape. To do this, it uses the gradient paint object that was already installed in the graphics 2D object. Now this sort of thing is typical of the graphics 2D stuff. Special instructions can be stored in the graphics 2D object, so when you draw and paint things later, it uses the special instructions.
If how this works isn't clear to you, you might want to rewind this movie and look at parts of it again, because there's a bit more to this gradient stuff, and we'll be looking at some of it in the next couple of lessons.